I remember when we, uh, I was talking to you before coming here, right? Saying, hey, Shamila, can we play a song together? <laughs> and say, sure, take a look at this piece. And then uh, I was listening to it, say, can you send me the, the like notation or something? Say, yeah, but you wouldn't understand. Yes. <laughs> I say, how come? <laughs> I know it's different, but how different, right? Hello everyone, welcome to New Music Paths. Today I'm in Edmonton and I'm so excited to be here with Sharmila Matur. She's a great sitar player, educator and composer. Hello, Sharmila. Hi, Dennis. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thanks for inviting me. It was a pleasure playing with you. Oh, I can say the same. <laughs> uh, well, I had the pleasure of playing some of your compositions today. I've been learning so much about Indian music, and I'm looking forward to uh, learn more about your journey and you know, your, your music. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, uh, the sitar is such a beautiful instrument. Did you start playing sitar? Um, so yeah, it, I was fascinated by sitar when I was really young and uh, I used to go to these hobby classes we have in India and every time I would go there and ask my teacher to teach me sitar and she would say, uh, you are too young to start, your hands are too small. <laughs> so before I could reach to start the sitar, I learned tabla, then I learned slide guitar, I learned harmonium. And then finally, I was of a size where they said, you can now start with a smaller sitar. How many years? Uh, I must be eight, nine years You old. had to wait all that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so started learning from there. And uh, after that, there was no stopping. So I kept learning and uh, did my undergrad in sitar. And then I went to my guru, uh, Pandit Vishwamon Bhatt. 
So he's a slight guitarist. So he he has turned the guitar, uh, all the stringing and everything he's done according to the sitar, uh -huh. and he calls it Mohan Veena, which uh -huh. is named after his family name. And how did that shape your your career? Like? Oh, like anything, uh, the many years learning is one side, and some months learning from his much more than that. So the way he taught me the compositions he plays, and he taught me his compositions. Those were amazing. Those were amazing. Oh, that's so great. And uh, his guru is uh, Ravi Shankar, right? Pandit Ravi Shankar, yes. So uh, he has learned from there. Actually, uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar was uh, one of the first uh, musicians who toured, who came to US and who went around the world. And uh, he, he was the first one to spread uh, the knowledge of Indian music, to introduce Indian music to the world. So through him, people started knowing what sitar is, what Indian music is. And then we all know he uh, did uh, some work with Beatles. I remember when we, uh, I was talking to you before coming here, right? Saying, hey, Shamila, can we play a song together? <laughs> and say, sure, take a look at this piece. And then uh, I was listening to it, say, can you send me the like notation or something? Say, yeah, but you wouldn't understand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and say, how come? <laughs> I know it's different, but how different, right? And then uh, I started like transcribing, right? And you said it's better if you transcribe maybe to a Western notation. Yeah. And there are like some changes of meter and uh, it, it's pretty fascinating. And then I did a score for myself and I learned a lot by doing that. What are the major differences that you see like from the two cultures? The notation system is totally different. We don't write on staff notation. Uh -huh. And uh, so our notation system, I, I always feel it's much simpler than the staff notes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's different. Music, if we talk about music, when people listen to Indian music, they always say it's so m relaxing, meditative and, you know, things like that. And there is a reason behind that. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, do uh, any rag, so for you, like in Western music, you have so many scales. Uh -huh. We have just one scale. Uh, equivalent to your C major scale, uh -huh. but all other your scales are rags for us. Uh -huh. So in those rags, we just don't have scales. Other than scales, there are important phrases which we play. There are important notes in each rag, which uh, we call vadi and samvadi uh -huh. notes. And that changes, that creates a mood in the rag. Mm -hmm. So when that mood is created, a rock can become romantic, a rock can become relaxing. So we have nine moods in Indian fine arts and through rags different uh, moods are created. So uh, a rag would be uh, a mode, like a, a, mode. a collection of notes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, also the way you play it, right? You were, you were mentioning. You yeah. yeah. So the way you Could approach each note. So people also talk about microtones uh, for Indian music. So uh, same note can be softer in one rag or so or little harsh in other rag. So uh -huh. so we have microtones which adjust uh, to the mood of the rag exactly. Could and you show that in the sitar? Yeah, sure. So these frets on sitar, we can move them unlike guitar or any other instrument. <laughs> That's so cool. So uh, if this is sa and this fret can be down here and this would be our re. Uh -huh. But if a rag has a re flat, uh -huh. then we would move it up and one rag can have it here. And that's, a, I, and that's a rag? That's a rag. And it's called bhairav. Oh, okay. If I want softer in another rag, softer ray, I would push it up and I can adjust the placement of the note. Uh -huh. So it would go. Uh -huh. So 
the placement of notes is possible because they are all movable. And that's how you play with the microtones. Exactly. So you move them and you place them according to the rag. So uh, just wondering, we played a, a piece together, one of your compositions. Uh, I think, what is that mode called? The no, sorry. How is that one called that we played? Uh, was it Yemen you are talking about? I'm just trying to. Yeah. So that's a uh, rag Yaman, a very popular rag. So you said uh, they're all attached to an emotion, right? Yeah, what so rag Yaman is a romantic rag. Oh. And uh, it's an evening rag. Uh -huh. So it's. Uh, So you would, it's a romantic rag and you would play at evening? It's in the evening, it's a, an evening rag. It's a romantic rag. So there are uh, ghazals in it, which are romantic form of singing. Uh -huh. There are also bhajans. So that romanticism can be for a human being, for a beloved, or it can be for God. Oh, okay. So if you create a, a more spiritual song and uh, compose it in Yaman, uh -huh. uh, it can be very beautifully romantic to connect with the God. Uh -huh. So all kind of romanticism, <laughs> wow. basically. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So wow, each raga, and there are like many ragas. There are many ragas, uh, hundreds of ragas, uh -huh. and uh, creating these moods. Uh -huh. Now, the other, another component too uh, that I learned from you is the, the tower, right? Mm -hmm. And what is the tower? So any composition we're doing in the rag, we have a variety of tals which are played on tabla. And uh, so a tal can be concise of uh, seven beats or 12 beats or 14 beats or 16 beats, six beats, eight beats. And uh, yeah, so the most fascinating for Westerners, I think is the seven beat uh, because it's an odd number and uh -huh. you can find it there. So, in those beats, the compositions are done uh -huh. and then played with it. Basically, tabla plays those beats in a loop. Okay, and uh, so, so you would choose a raga, which is a, a mode, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. a, a group of notes, mm -hmm. and then which has a, a specific emotion and mood, and then uh, you would choose a tempo mm -hmm. and a tal to yeah. go with that. Exactly. And that can variate. That can variate. You can choose the one you feel like. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's and, really. And when sitar is played, uh, we start with the very slow alap in the beginning, where uh -huh. the tabla doesn't start. Uh -huh. And after playing alap, jod alap, uh, after playing all those, then tabla starts, and we play so com slow composition, uh -huh. fast composition, and the last part is called jhala, okay. uh, which is a faster way of playing to end up uh -huh. the uh, performance.
So uh, well, that's fascinating, Sharmila. It's fascinating. I, uh, I'm learning so much. Uh, but you did a good job playing uh, together with me. <laughs> we <laughs> met for the first time today and uh, you yeah. could play so well with Indian music. <laughs> that yeah. was amazing. Oh, thank you so much. It's, yeah. It means a lot coming from you because I've never played Indian music before. And uh, it's definitely taking like, uh, you know, the ears to, my ears to a different level because I have to listen uh, to every, you know, nuances. Thank you.